And I've had the privilege of attending several of her uh, workshops that she's given for teachers. And so you are, you are in for an amazing treat today. So let's welcome Dr. Diana. Where we're going to be analyzing and observing patterns, shapes, and structures in nature, and we're going to tie that into science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay. We, right now, are going to open up those bags. Are you excited? I know in there. Let's open up that bag. And what you want to do is you want to take those materials and you want to take them out of your bag and put them in front of you. Look at their shapes, design, see how they might tie into science, technology, engineering, and math. What do you STEM. see on the bottom of that screen? STEM. A uh, what? A Fibonacci pattern. Oh my goodness. Can you write that down on your note-taking paper? But in nature, we see the Fibonacci series over and over again. Does anyone have an idea what that series is? Go home with your daughter, and it doesn't have to be necessarily done today, but she's going to be excited about science, so this is when you want to do it today. You have her go around your yard, and you have her get a little clipboard, with note-taking paper, and you have her find Fibonacci numbers in nature. Realize that that's a very efficient structure, so we have applied that to engineering and to building, okay? Nature has been here a long time. It's much more efficient than mankind. Is that right? We get all of our, our ideas from nature. You're going to have it in front of you. You're going to see that it has an airfoil, just like the airplane. The bolt, the hexagon bolt. What size does the hexagon have? This. Right now, take that hexagon bolt, and I want you to outline that on your drawing paper, your notating paper. Mary has said that hexagon bolt is like beehives, and that's what we want to be doing today. Yes. We want to be making those yeah, correlations. We want to be looking at those objects in nature to see where mankind has done this. This is what we look at nature because it's very efficient. So it has dimples, but the Callaway HX has actually hexagon dimples. It actually has hexagon dimples. Golf balls do not have dimples on them. And what did they find out? In front of your golfers in there, why do they have dimples to the golf ball? The flight. With the dimples, they go farther the golf ball with your eyelid. Now you should see that you're going to see the dimples, and the dimples are warm. The more warm the dimples, that bar, ball is not going to go as far. But the interesting thing, are you ready? Right now, if you were, I want you to do this. We're, we're talking, you guys, I can tell you guys are engineers, mathematicians, scientists. I mean, you guys are the top notch parents in the whole world right here today. Take that, uh -huh, I'm telling you. Take that ball, draw another circle, and if you draw circles, draw some circles now. Hold on, I'm serious. Draw about four circles, four little dimples inside that circle. And now, if you draw a second ball, a second ball, and this time, draw hexagons. See, what are you going to see when the hexagon compared to the circle? Okay, right there, strike your shirt. All the sides start to be hexagon, no doubt. Oh my goodness, let's give her a big hand. Oh my goodness. Hexagon ball does not allow for any gas whatsoever. So when you look at your circle design, you have some gaps. But in the hexagon, it has, are you ready? Write this down. Who is a golfer in this group? Anyone? Only one? That is amazing. Two, three. Okay, that figures. Okay, okay, maybe four. That, boy, that's amazing. We'll see. You know why? Because where are the golfers right now? They're not here, that's for sure. Yeah, they're not here. My goodness, that was a pretty silly question I asked, right? 100% coverage with the hexagon as compared to about 80% with the other. And look at this. This person, oh, very good. The person with the most notes today gets a very cool, oh, oh, my. and she's got the interactive student notebook. I can't even talk that. Texture versus solution. Very important. You go home today and you make sure your daughter knows the difference between mixture solution and physical versus chemical change. We're going to be working with the solution because it's completely, it's completely mixed together. We cannot isolate the soap from the water. We can't go back to our original water with our soap solution, can we? So would that be a chemical or physical change? Chemical. I want you to predict, Reed, what kind of shape you think you're gonna get in the cup of your bubble when you take that straw and you blow into there. What kind of shape are you gonna get? What kind of bubble shapes are gonna form? I know you cannot wait. Put that straw into that cup, and I want you to now get those bubbles going. <laughs> 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 
the sphere. It's the it's all a, it's like a honeycomb. Oh my goodness! It's like a honeycomb. Is that exciting? That is exciting. Did I tell you that was yeah. exciting? Of mm -hmm. a soccer ball, what two shapes, geometry shapes, are in a soccer ball? Hexagon and the pentagon. Tree ring. Put it underneath your paper and take the crayon and rub back and forth. And what's going to show up? You're going to get this tree ring rubbing. So that's an easy way to actually count how old that tree is. You can look for something that is not completely see-through. Okay, it's in a bag and it is it's translucent and it has lines on it it's so exciting find that and take that out of the bag and put it on your palm and look at it with your uh, loop scale fish scale and there's many the fish scale the fish scale has lines on it or rings and if you count those rings or lines you can tell the age of the fish. This is a whole science in itself. The tree ring analysis and the fish scale analysis. Scale rings and tree rings. So see how nature is so organized? Okay, how do you tell you know, when we're humans? Lines, gray hairs. You all the same thing. For something that has a hexagon shape, and you're going to really have to be a top notch scientist to find it, that comes from the living world. That's from the natural world, okay? Creature, a horseshoe crab, basically a living fossil related to our trilobite, which lived before the dinosaurs, looks a little bit like a, a Madagascar co cockroach, which is probably you don't see running around your house. <laughs> um, if you look at the eyes, and we'll pass this around. There should be, if you have one of these, just pass it around the room, but first put your eye loop up to it, and you know what you're gonna see? The interlocking hexagon of the eye of the horseshoe crab. Very exciting. So we're gonna start it down here. Actually, anytime you have repeating patterns, that's a tessellation. If you look up on the ceiling, the, the, the actual covering of the light bulb is showing you tessellation. Six main points, no two snowflakes are alike. They have their differences based on the temperature they format and that level of the atmosphere that they actually form. And a really good book, write this down, it's not in your references, Snowflake Bentley. When you put them down, like your models, you're going to either get your pentagon or your hexagon. So repeating patterns in nature. How do seeds travel? The air, how else? Animals, how else? Water, fire. Sign come see and see how it falls. Just drop it. It should flutter, it should do a nice spin. And that design is a, what kind of design? It is a spiral design. You're going to form this into a shape that has the ability to stay aloft for a very brief amount of time. Make our loop. You got that? And we're the stars and drop that and observe how it falls. You can even move. You don't have to stay in your spot. So very simple. Very simple. Except what you do with your daughter. Are you ready? As you provide her with sheets of construction paper or any other kind of paper, you say your next job is to make a modification to this. What you do is make one modification at a time because if we do two different things to this, we won't know what affected the results. So you only make one change at a time. It's very important. Scientific method. One change, this is a group. What could you do with this? One change to one modification. Make another notch. Could actually, actually cut it out and make a different design. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematical skills. Do you feel at this point the coffee's gone in, the taste is gone in, you are just ready to go? What do you think? Do you think so? Okay. It's okay. not a pyramid because it's not a base of four, it's a base of three. We can say a triangular prism or a tetrahedron. To build it, you're going to dip it into the Sophie solution. And again, this is called, and you can write this down, the minimum surface area phenomena. And it's always going to meet into the center. It takes the least amount of energy to do that. You can take these scarbanzo beans and they're going to shrivel up and dry up overnight. Nothing eats them. You know, kids aren't going to eat them, bugs don't eat them. And then you have a secure structure. So then you buy a bag of these, soak them overnight, and you have your daughter build bridges and she can do Testing to see it, you know, how much uh, weight that that bridge can hold. Imagine your trusses. So this is a great investigation if you're Katrine, Katrine Bill. Wow, this is Katrine.